the Priscilla's Shallows of Madagascar. Located on the cusp of a bustling trade route, it is the perfect place for an ambush. Here is our gang of pirates, the Raiders, going head to head with a gang of rival players, the Cutthroats. Victory goes to the team with the most loot at the end of the hunt. Knowing how to sail with the wind is a pirate's most precious skill. Use the winds to increase your speed or to position yourself for tactical advantage in battle. To reap the most rewards, it is best to split up, some going inland, others keeping to the open sea. Each warship has unique strengths. The frigate's hull is reinforced, its arsenal equipped with numerous culvering cannons. The brigantine is devastating up close, with a battering ram designed to break any resistance. Set for top. Move. The sloop of war kills from afar, with its crippling long-ranged mortars and precise long nine cannons. Sail! Flying hostile colors! All sail! Ride the wind! All hands on deck! Position fixed! Open fire! Nothing will save you now! Bridge for impact! Woo! Drown, you soggy nutmegs! Don't let bloodlust cloud your purpose. You're here for the loot, and so are your rivals. Store the goods, then back to your station! The team that escapes with the most loot claims victory. Searching for more targets on the horizon, our sloop of war spots a rival pirate ship further inland. With its heavily reinforced hull, our frigate swoops in to save the day, bearing the brunt of the damage. Our gang of pirates is now taking aim at the frigate, and it will take team coordination to take her down. Fuego! Hold tight, lads! That ship's badly damaged! They are killing! We can take that ship! With the enemy ship's broadside now vulnerable, our frigate rushes in to board her. No quarter! Taste the blackened silver! Fancy snorting some fish, miss! <laughs> Pirate hunters have been sent in, signaling the end of the hunt. They target the pirates with the most stolen loot. Time to make our escape, Captain, or we are good for the news. They're firing mortars! Full tilt, Silvo, full tilt! The pirate hunter defenses are so strong that the only option is escape. The brigantine is sacrificing herself to buy time for the frigate who carries the most loot. The frigate now needs to make its escape through the reefs. Captain, let's make for the reefs! Successful pirates know when to run, with their hulls full and the wind at their backs. Yeah! Sailor, what will we do with the drunken sailor?
Hello, I'm John Garvin, the writer and director, and I'm here with... Sam Whitwer. I play Deacon St. John in Days Gone. Yeah, and yes. we're here to talk about the Alternate Path demo. So we did two demos for E3 this year. One you guys saw at uh, the Media Showcase, and this one we showed behind closed doors on, on the floor at E3. And so for the first time, we're releasing it online so that everybody can kind of take a look at it. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about, you know, what the differences are um, and just kind of like just show you what we were trying to accomplish this year. Yeah, I mean, the most obvious difference so far is it's the last one was nighttime during the rain and this is daytime during the snow. Yeah, and that, you know, and, that, and it's not just cosmetic. And I think that's one of the things we really wanted to emphasize, you know, because this, this, this time we're showing sort of a day in the life of Deacon. You see he's on the drifter bike here. Um, we wanted to show a little more of the bike riding and how the weather can kind of impact that. So we have this drifting mechanic, right? You see him right. kind of slipping and sliding around a little Changes bit. Changes the handling of the bike. Um, that's really interesting. Now, there were wolves there last time, John, and these wolves would pursue you down this road, and then Deacon had to turn his back, shoot a wolf, and he got clothesline, and he got clothesline. right yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So this time you see that he wasn't being chased by the wolves. That's a dynamic event that can just, that just, you know, it's just, a, that can happen or not. It just depends on, on when you're playing the game. Interesting. And this yeah. time Deacon saw the ambush and he was able to avoid it. So he kind of comes up and around and behind so them. So does weather impacts whether these creatures show up or not in daytime, nighttime, all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So especially the freakers, they come out, they're mostly nocturnal, but they will come out as the weather gets colder. They become stronger in the cold. Right. And so that will, you know, again kind of change up the way the game plays that's very very uh i i kind of love that you decided to do this as a demo to show two completely different iterations on the same exact mission in the game yes exactly so we wanted to have uh you know this the job is basically the same deacon hears that his buddy's in trouble rides out to save his life and, you know, as you can see here, this is a completely different experience from what we showed in the first demo. In the first one, Deacon gets clotheslined, um, and it sounded very painful, by the way. Oh, that. that looks, speaking of painful, um, okay, so <laughs> the combat in this game is fairly brutal. John, you want to talk about that a little well, bit? Well, we just wanted to make it as, you know, as realistic as possible. So, yeah, we're not holding back on that at all. Um, and, you know, and Sam's done most of his own stunt work for this. And I can tell you that when we're on the performance stage and we're capturing that stuff, we just try to keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, um, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we've we've been work I've been wor I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more, what were we? It, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into, hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and, and showing the horror of the violence that happens and, and, and it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the, not just the stunts, but also the performance style. I think, you know, it's very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors, uh, you know, saying lines. It was yeah. all very incidental. And we, you know, we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that, you know, Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm -hmm. And here, I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was, you know, and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, we call this the meat wall. <laughs> the meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary. That's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up, uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. 
Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah, stumble, that's a, that's an alarm that the time. marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world. You'll find traps like that. And then if you're careful and you're paying attention, you can avoid them. Because in the first demo, Deacon didn't avoid it, and he set off that alarm. Right now, now this is the same tactic that he used last time. Throws the rock to get someone to. To lure, lure them over and have them step in the very trap. But this one plays out a little bit differently than last time. One of the things that, that struck me, and we've talked about this obviously as we've shot, but there's there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up, and he won't. Yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time we're showing what happened. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, shut up, shut up, shut up, and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. Right. And of course, in the meantime, Deacon you know is crafting a Molotov and just takes them all. Out. Right. Oh, boy, this people. Ow. Ow. Ah. So yeah, so again, it's like in the pre in the previous demo, Dem Deacon would have gone off to the trail down to the right. This time he's going to head this way. He follows the tracks, uh, and comes under now, a sniper attack. Now let me ask you something about the survival. Okay, there's a sniper attack coming, but uh, the uh, survival vision is if you don't say upgrade your survival vision, can you miss clues? I mean, are there things that that you would get if you upgraded your survival vision yes. that would help you complete the mission better? Exactly, and you have to, you know, we have a whole skill tree and it's all mm -hmm. tied to the experience that you can earn as you're just playing through the game and, and then you can upgrade those and things. What's happening here? We got a freaker tied to a tree. Yeah, so this is another type of trap that marauders will set. They will set, you know, they will basically chain freakers um, to the perimeter of their camps and they use them as kind of an alarm system. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, you know, you saw that marauder there, he was just tormenting the poor freaker and then yeah. so Deacon kind of take it, takes advantage of that. Well, and you think for a moment that Deacon is the guy, he's, he's sort of helping the freaker by, you know, getting the guy that taunted him. Like, no, no. And then he's going to take the freaker out right afterward. Exactly. And this is a bit of uh, silent sniping using the crossbow. Yeah, so this whole sequence at the end plays out very differently. In the first demo, you saw Deacon use a swarm. He weaponized a swarm, lured them into the camp, and then they kind of did the work for him. There's no swarm in this run through. Right. So the player really has to go in and use what we're calling our strategic sandbox combat and that's just you know stealth mechanics and setting and using traps whole arsenal of weapons you see there's a variety of weapons that Deacon's going to use through this including the crossbow you know he crafts his own bolts um, and you know he's got to he's got to figure out how to get up to Manny uh, just you know using his combat skills right. instead of doing it strategically so straight me out those those bonfires were those there in the previous demo no they weren't right so that's another big difference is that if you come here during the day you know it's like in the in the media showcase demo there was like kind of a fight club thing going right, on right they were they were punching each other <laughs> and everybody was just sort of getting into it nobody's really paying yeah, attention it, to what's it, going on yeah. and now it's getting dark and it's cold out so you know they built these bonfires so. You know, and again, it's just, it, it's not just a cosmetic change in the way the... Well, it's the, cold, right? Yeah, it's, they, it's because it's they cold. They have to build some... So it yeah. changes the way the, the, the marauders behave in the level. Mm -hmm. well, that's very... Again, this is part of the reason why I love that you did this as a demo, because the, the, the behavior of all of these things, not just the freakers, but the marauders, everything, there's a logic to it. You can track why they're doing the things that they're doing, um, and you can use it to your advantage in the gameplay. That's that's kind of what I like about this so much. That, that and that's really what we wanted to showcase this year is that it's an open world game, and you know everything you see around here. And again, we're only playing this two different ways. Um, you saw that waterfall way up there off in the distance. There's a bridge that goes in front of that. If you had a sniper rifle and enough ammunition, you could have driven your bike all the way up there. There's mm -hmm. trails that go all the way up there. And you could have used your sniper rifle to take out this entire camp because it would have taken them a while to figure out where the shots were coming from and to get to you. So, you know, that's a different way to play. There's another way to play, by the way, where you could have just stealth in through the entire camp if you had the skills to do it. And you could have just taken everybody out silently or, or almost everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you could have gotten up to where Manny's being held using a different route and, you know, just stealth killed that guy. There's no reason that you have to come in and run and gun it like, um, like Deacon is doing here. Hey, how, how scarce is ammunition? Because I see him switching uh, from a bunch of weapons, and I, when we saw this demo, when I, when I came in and saw day three, one of the things that I, that I really enjoyed was I was sitting next to you, and the driver was playing the game, and at some point I saw you shift in your chair, and you leaned forward, and I heard you say, oh man, uh-oh. 
And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? He's like, he's going to get killed. Oh, I'm right. like, whoa, oh. <laughs> and I, I, I leaned forward. I was like, oh, I guess there's some real danger. And one of the things was that he was running out of ammunition. Um, and he was trying to go pick up ammo yes. from the dead uh, He was looking for ammo, marauders, yeah. but but and he I've was seen, under fire. So when we were so. at E3, we had a whole team with us, and everybody played it slightly differently. So it just shows you that it's not scripted at all. Yeah. Um, and then this rager bear. Oh yeah, boy. the infected bear. The infected bear. That's yeah, yeah. That's not what you want to see. Well, that we thought that would be a, <laughs> we thought that would be a good way to end the demo is to show that it's just one, for Deacon's life. It's just one darn thing after, after another. another. Yeah. Right. You're going to save your buddy. You get clotheslined. You get attacked by wolves, or you know, you you think you're finally done. You rescued your. You, you know, you've gone through all the stuff, and then suddenly, rager bear. Right. Well, as as you said to me, it's not just about exploring an open world as it is the open world coming after you, the open world seeking you out, trying to... Yeah, exactly. That's our tagline. Um, in Days Gone, you don't have to go seeking out trouble. The world comes for you. Trouble is looking for you. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Thanks, John. It's been fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the demo, and uh, we'll talk more about it soon. Hi, I'm John Warner, game director for Anthem. Hey! Listen, there's trouble. Big trouble. What did you do? <sighs> I made a mistake. I hired some people. They weren't freelancers. I know. They said they could handle it. And the price was right. I thought maybe... Unbelievable. You're right. It was stupid. I'm sorry. But they're still out there. Somewhere. If you could just bring them back. Anything you need. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers, the heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus to explore the unknown and protect humanity. Let's join two players as they head out on an expedition. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? We're just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you going to use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm going to use my Ranger. Try out some new upgrades. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. Bam, looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. Hang 
in there. Almost there. Have you been in there yet? I haven't. We should do that later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. We got some action of that. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis' mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. Scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. I have time to use that mortar. <laughs> Give me some covering fire. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> oh, come on. Be something good. Oh, yes! Jer's Wrath. Oh, nice. Large scale world events like Shaper Stories are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path with the promise of new stories to discover. Oh, Shaper Storm incoming. Okay. Actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, what's happening? I'm right behind you. Whoa. This storm is getting crazy. What are we supposed to do? Fly into it? All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. Hello, everyone. My name is Philippe Fournier, associate producer on Far Cry 5. And I'm Mari Knadel, a scriptwriter on Far Cry 5. Today we're going to take you through our extended E3 demo and highlight some of the features that we're really excited about. Welcome to Hope County, Montana. This is the Holland Valley, a section of farmland that the project at Eden's Gate is using as their breadbasket. With us in this demo, we have our loyal dog Boomer as your fang for hire. For now, I just can't resist. The setup is too perfect. I'm going to use this tractor against the cult. The cult is stealing supplies and kidnapping people, using them to prepare for a doomsday that's really just around the corner. We're going to put you in the shoes of a rookie deputy and drop you into the heat of the conflict. In Far Cry 5, we want to give you tools that feel like they belong in Montana in your fight against a doomsday cult. And now we're going to make a quick getaway in case reinforcements arrive. Oh Christ, help me. Boomer is just one of the many allies you can recruit using our four hire system. Each of them has special abilities and it's up to you to select which companion to bring along for the ride. Whether you're just exploring the open world or fighting cultists head on in a specific <coughs> location. <coughs> Cute dog. <coughs> My dad would love to know what type of breed is Boomer? No, seriously. His um, breed is Mutt, but he is um, mostly Blue Healer by the looks of him. Montana is a great place to fish, and it was important for us to create a system where we allowed players to live that experience in the rivers and lakes of Hope County. 
you will find many different types of fish. It's a really good way for players to gain experience and also just get away from the conflict. And here we see the player needs to fight a little bit to get the fish. Nice, catch of the day on the menu. So it's nice to unwind with some fishing every now and then, but we know the cult isn't taking any breaks because they have an apocalypse to prepare for. As you explore the county, you'll come across cultists working hard to serve Joseph, the father of their cult. They're taking food and supplies for their bunkers, they're blocking the roads so no one can escape, and they're destroying resources so the resistance can't use them. And it looks like we spotted something up ahead. Yeah, let's take out our binoculars. All right, it seems like there's a small group of cultists there, Mari. All right, so this looks like a forced baptism. What do you say we get in there, Phil? Yeah, let's do it. I think the best approach would be to go in stealthily through the river with Boomer by our side. I think we're well equipped to get rid of those two guys. Here we're using one of the iconic weapons featured in Far Cry 5, the revolver. And you'll be able to customize those weapons by adding attachments or changing the color scheme and hunt the cult in style. Go Boomer! Alright, Boomer showing off one of his one of his skills. This can really be a game changer in a fight where you're a bit low of ammo or you don't have the right weapon for the situation. He's a good dog. You know, Boomer's a great all-rounder who can support any playstyle. Even without your commands, he'll fetch guns for you, take down cultists in a fight, and he'll tag enemies and animals from far away with his keen sense of smell. The game being set in America, it was important for us to bring a wide variety of vehicles from pickups to tractors to big rigs like this one. This one is specifically called the Widowmaker. It's like a battering ram on wheels, and it's a great tool to create chaos and take down enemy vehicles or roadblocks. And it looks like we got one here. Let's do it. Pedal to the middle. <laughs> that boss bobblehead didn't even move. We're so good. We got him glued onto the dash. That's it. Boom. So it sounds like we're listening to the cult radio station. I got to say, some of their hymns are pretty catchy, Phil. Now we're pulling up to Ryan Sun's Aviation. This is the home of Nick Rye. He's a crop duster and a family man. He's doing what he can to keep his family safe and keep the cult from getting his plane, but it looks like they've beaten us here, so let's jump right in. There's no time to waste. And let's Boomer like, kind of create distractions for us to get behind cover and help Nick fight the cultists. In Far Cry 5, you'll need to improvise and choose from a vast arsenal of weapons and find elements in the environment to take down the enemy. Here we go. So we just took down the last cultist at Nick Rise using my favorite stealth weapon, a baseball bat. Sometimes you can hear Boomer growling when he feels a threat nearby. And Boomer is just part of Far Cry 5's living world we've built where there's always something or someone around you whether you notice it or not. This means you'll always need to be prepared. Boomer will stand his ground and defend you from predators as there are a lot of moments for the player to hunt or be hunted and we've built a deep ecosystem that represents Montana's wilderness. So, you know, we've seen ducks, um, a sturgeon, deer, and this is just a small sample of all of the wild animals that you'll encounter in Hope County. So now we've jumped into Nick Rye's plane. It's been in his family for generations, and with it, we'll take to the sky to destroy some uh, cult silos that are hoarding explosives. The world that we've built is larger than any Far Cry before, and for the first time you can explore the world in any direction that you choose right from the start. In this demo, we're in Holland Valley, and this is just one small part of Hope County. Montana is called Big Sky Country after all. Flying is a great way to travel, explore the county, and scout out new opportunities. And also blow things up. 
go! Nice work, partner. Go get the other one. Oh, looks like the cult has decided to intervene. That plane belongs to a Chosen. Now, the Chosen are elite soldiers, and it's their job to basically crush any threat to the project at Eden's Gate. So we've done enough to anger the cult. We're going to engage in a little dogfight with them and show them what we think of them. That's right. Even in the air, there's a lot of opportunities for the player to uh, you know, find or discover or get chased by... Get by, discovered. Or get discovered, yeah, totally. Uh, hunt or be hunted, as we call it. I think right now we are the predator. Yep, we got them on the run. They're smoking. 